destroy her. I hardly knew her. <laughs> so stupid. <laughs> oh God. Who is it? No ID, no idea. I'm Lindsay and this is my review for Destroyer. I went and saw Destroyer this past weekend. I was really looking forward to it because the second I saw the preview and I saw Nicole Kidman and she was near unrecognizable, playing a role that was very against her usual type, very gritty, very dark, very bleak. So I knew it was something that I wanted to go see. So I went and saw it. And my reaction is a little mixed. Basic storyline is, you're following her character, Belle, Detective Belle, who is a Los Angeles detective, and she is trying to get revenge on someone named Silas for an undercover job that went terribly wrong um, during her early days of police work. And you don't get what exactly happened in the past, up front in the movie, it kind of gives you a little bit here and there, and then finally at the end you see what actually happened and why she wants revenge so bad. And while she's doing this, she's also dealing with a 16-year-old daughter who is sneaking out, dating a much older man, going to clubs, just kind of coming to terms with how her life turned out. And that was the stuff that I liked the most, was just her realizing I have screwed this up because of my anger and my stupidity and my indifference and I know how to fix it, but it's not going to be easy. You can be better than me. For the first 20 to 30 minutes of this film, I completely did not buy her in the role. She's extremely thin, which I mean, Nicole Kidman is very skinny anyways, and she's very tall, and she's extremely gaunt, no makeup, they ruddy her up quite a bit, and then she has this just terrible, terrible black wig on. It's so bad. That wig and the wig that she wears when she's playing her younger self, they're, they're really bad. They're not good. There's a couple of really bad wigs in this movie. And her affect and mannerisms are extremely sluggish. And it's like she just woke up and has a really bad hangover through the entirety of the film, pretty much. But especially in that first 30 minutes, it's like Eeyore, because she speaks extremely low and monotone, and you just don't get any character from her. It's not until almost the, almost the midway point, just before the midway point, when the action actually starts to pick up, that you see any kind of motivation and emotion and reaction from this character. And that was when I started to see her more as the character, not just Nicole Kidman in bad makeup and a terrible wig. I'm mad, I'm still mad. It's burnt a circuit in my brain. I really liked how it was shot. The director, Karen Kusama, I really liked uh, one of her previous films, The Invitation. I think she does a very good job of slowly building up and building up and holding the audience in. In this one, I don't think she was quite as successful doing that. Because like I said, it took almost half the movie. It wasn't until Bradley Whitford showed up that uh, I started actually getting engaged and being pulled into the story. But it's very dark. You see Nicole Kidman do some very un-Nicole Kidman-like things. <laughs> You do feel some sympathy for her character, 
mostly when she's talking to her daughter and trying to express to her daughter that she does actually love her, then you get some empathy for this character. But as far as what happened with the past, she kind of made her own bed. If we do this, we accept the consequences. Yes. Do you love me? You know I do. So the, the threat of Silas wasn't that apparent. Because, I mean, you see him do some pretty awful things and some shady stuff, but it's not enough to where he's this looming threat that kind of overshadows what she's doing. You really don't get a sense of his character because you, you really don't see him that often. And she doesn't talk about him often. What you mostly see, it's through flashbacks. The movie does a very good job of subverting what you think is happening and the order of events and I found that very surprising and refreshing with this film. There was a lot of missing information, things that weren't fully explained, missing chunks of time where you're like, well how did they get from point A to point B on that? Because she was pulled into this FBI undercover operation, but she was an LA County Sheriff. But when we meet her in the beginning of the film, she's a Los Angeles City detective. So, okay, how did she go from being a deputy to a detective? Two different agencies, especially when she's involved in this undercover operation that did not go well at all. There was just a lot of logistical stuff that really was murky. But yeah, <laughs> it's pretty easy to do an impression of Nicole Kidman <laughs> in this film. You just have to talk really low and not move your upper lip. And you ask where Silas is, where's Silas? You're not gonna get these guns back until I get a name. This is how she talked through the whole movie. I'm looking for Silas. I'm looking for Silas. Well, that's more Batman, but you get the idea. Where are we? I'd say Nicole Kidman's look in this film is if her skeleton put on a really bad dollar store wig and a leather jacket and mumbled at you. <laughs> I wanna find something decent, something good. She fucked Bradley Whitford up though. <laughs> well, that's gonna do it for this review. Until next time, this is Lindsay signing off. I will check you later.